were following in the footsteps of Herbert Evans, whose book, The Highways and Byways of Oxford and the Cotswolds, describes his journey on a bicycle through the region in 1905. Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Chopra, and you find Ross, Widget, and me in the beautiful village of Woodstock today. It's a cold day, as you can tell, beginning of January 2019. Um, we're here uh, partly to visit the village itself, but also to have a look at Blenheim Palace. As its name implies, Woodstock was originally just a clearing in the forest where they built a wooden stockade. This entire region was covered in forest, uh, used for hunting and all that kind of stuff. Um, these days, of course, there's very little of it left, uh, but we're going to look at the beautiful village itself and take you around. Come with me. You can tell by just looking at it that Woodstock has always been a prosperous village. Royal patronage over the generations made a huge difference. Ancient coaching inns, all now brought up to 21st century standards, offer great accommodation to the visitor, and restaurants, shops and galleries abound to keep the traveller happy for a while. The Oxfordshire Museum behind me um, is a great facility at Woodstock. It has all kinds of things. There's a great cafe here, there's a brilliant art gallery and exhibitions given of, of various kinds throughout the year. It's quite a facility and definitely worth a visit. Behind me is one of the most famous of the buildings in the village of Woodstock. It's called Chaucer's Cottage. Um, its connection with Geoffrey Chaucer is fairly tenuous. Um, it seems to have belonged to the wife of his son. Uh, whether or not any of the Chaucer's ever lived here is a little bit uh, dubious, but such is the power of the name, of course, um, that it's uh, still here. Chaucer's Lane is the little lane that runs down behind me. Um, it's a classic Cotswold cottage and very beautiful. So we've walked straight from the high street of Woodstock through this wonderful arch and into what must be one of the most beautiful parks in the world. This is the most astonishing view, the palace behind me and the lake behind me. Now, I'm going to leave, if you want to know more about uh, Blenheim Palace, really there are better people to tell you than I. And uh, so we're not going to get any, go into any great detail about the palace itself. But it does have a couple of interesting stories from here. Um, the bridge behind me was first built over the stream. It was just a stream with a marshy land around it, and it was built as a kind of viaduct so people could get across the marshes. It was when Capability Brown redesigned this park that he dammed the stream and flooded the valley behind me, creating under this bridge this lake that you see. It was an extraordinarily brilliant thing to do. Um, last year, 2018, they had to dredge this lake because naturally the stream is silting it up all the time. They drained it, they took out millions of tons of, of, of uh, soil, but in doing so they discovered that the bottom of this bridge behind me is made up of lots of different rooms. Initially, when it wasn't supposed to be in the middle of a lake, they designed this bridge to have rooms for entertainment. Apparently there's even a little theatre in there. All drowned again now, of course all underwater. On the far side of the lake once stood the old palace. Nothing's left of it now, but it was a royal palace from the time of Ethelred II to Charles I, before the first Duchess of Marlborough had it removed. Partly, it seems, to spite the architect of Blenheim who wanted to restore it. They didn't have the best of relationships. It was in the gatehouse of this old palace that Elizabeth, before she became queen, was imprisoned for a year by her sister, Queen Mary, under suspicion of having been involved in the plot against the throne by Thomas Wyatt. People will always argue about the architectural qualities of Blenheim. To some, it's a huge, heavy monstrosity. 
to others an amazing exercise in architectural symmetry. Evans writes, somewhat diplomatically, I will only say that in the magnificent strength of its solid proportions and in the imposing severity of its classic design, it is a fitting monument both of its age and of the military hero in whose honour it was erected. Mm, I'm not sure he was a fan. Since the 16th century, the village was renowned for the quality of its handmade gloves. There was something in the water of the stream that allowed the local cottagers to make the softest gloves anywhere. Anthony Wood, the 17th century antiquary, wrote of the stream, It hath so great virtue therein that all the skins of a more delicate kind are so well seasoned with it for the making of white leather that none whiter, softer or better is hardly found. Gloves have been a bit out of fashion for a while now and I'm not sure we'll ever see the like of that again. Well, we've had a lot of fun in Woodstock. You may have noticed that for a very, probably the first time that we've been doing these things, we've not been able to use the drone. Um, it's a shame, actually, because you can imagine what Blenheim Palace would have looked like from the air. But we are so close to the airport that we saw on Campsfield Plain uh, that that would be a really dangerous thing to do. So we've refrained from that. We've had a nice time, however. When you come here to Woodstock, and I really recommend that you should, uh, remember to give yourself a little bit of time to find a parking space. It's the only thing to bear in mind. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. And of course, our website is thecotswoldexplorer.co.uk. We look forward to seeing you next week. Next time, we're heading due north from here to visit Steeple Aston and then on to the golden towns of Deddington and Adderbury. We'll see you there.